Yeah, this is true buzz. That Mary J. Now we ain't new to this. For my stoners and for my cannabis enthusiasts, talking edibles and bringing comedy. Let's get it. Time to pass it to the left and we can have a smoke session. Hey, yeah, true love for my true buzz. Light it up and I'm on it. This vibe take me way back. <laughs> Screaming, I got five, five on, on. It. in the cut of sativa. Anything that you need, break it down like the weed. This is true buzz TV. True buzz. I'm a stoner, I'm a smoker. It's a hobby, it's a lifestyle and a culture. Yeah, yeah. True buzz, vibing out of California. Come and take a ride with the squad while we roll up. Hey, hey. True buzz. Yeah, this is true buzz. You put it in the Heineken. I might have to try it. Oh. I didn't even think about. It. I didn't know you were gonna put it in there. My 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 grandpa, R.I.P. Ronnie. He loves Heineken. You know what? This is my first time. People swear by the Heineken Zeros. I bought them for this event we were doing at uh, Pineapple Express. Okay. Um, what strain did you put in? I just did the uh, Super Lemon Haze. That's a good because that's going to be an upper, so you're not going to, you know. And I'm choice. about to make us a little couple here. But we got the uh, Blunt Master Kyle from Self Made Labs in the building. And I just want to say, like, Kyle rolled up and just like broke out the most shit. He came ready as a notepad. I'm like, dude, we're and before we were talking and you're getting me excited, dude. You're knowledgeable as fuck. So yeah, I've been I you know I when I like things I get really into them, so I get like super obsessed, you know. And uh, so I dove headfirst into weed. I actually really never started smoking cannabis until I was probably about like in my twenties. Okay. Um, I'm from the south side of Chicago and. There, there's only one thing to do, and that is, <laughs> you start drinking beer. Is all <laughs> everyone's Irish, so marijuana growing up was really taboo, and I was pretty much afraid of everything. Um, when I go back home and people see the person that I become, that they're like, "What happened?" <laughs> and uh, I actually have a friend who, how I really truly got into weed, is. I was super, super afraid and had this huge stigma against it. So that's why I like Purewana is really breaking the stigma. This is so different and such a great introduction to people like my family who come from kind of the background of like having a drink to relax. And so this is a little bit more like, all right, let's ease you in. But um, growing up, I had had a lot of really bad anxiety, which I know now is from dysphoria. And... Um, I found out recently that I have something weird where pain medication doesn't really affect me. And I that was like confirmed. And so being on any medication or anything, what when I was growing up wasn't really an option. I kind of handled my anxiety. My family's really old school. They were like power through it, work through it, apply yourself to work, do some art. Um, so up until I was probably 20, 21, I just lived with severe anxiety. Like I probably woke up every day with a panic attack, right? right? I just had terrible anxiety. And I went out when I was in college once and everybody was eating these edibles. Have you ever seen the movie Smiley Face? Oh, I thought, is there a, like a hot chick on the cover of it? Um, and like Anna Ferris is in it. So that, okay, that might... Yeah, I don't think I have that. I, I don't know. I, I don't think... Smiley Face is an old school... Um, like stoner comedy starring Anna Ferris. the premise of the movie is her roommate who isn't a stoner makes all these edibles for his friend him and his friends and uh, she goes into the fridge after smoking a joint and eats them all and it's about her day on these edibles and uh, I saw it with my homies in Colorado where I went to school watched the movie thought it was the dumbest shit of my life I was like I don't understand this Next week, my buddy who showed us the film decides to recreate what it, the what had happened, and I did not know this. So they all made these carrot cake, what was it, train wreck medical grade hash muffins. Okay, they were probably a hundred milligrams of hash, and this is in 2012, 2011. This is pro way prior to uh, like you know. Things being really regulated, so I his drug dealer Superman made us these edibles. I didn't know they were edibles. I just happened to come into the room when everyone was handing these out, and they gave me one. So I ate one and I left, and like Home Alone <laughs> style, I'm halfway down the hall and like people bust out of this room, 
chased me down. And he's like, you can't go to school today. And I'm like, why not? <laughs> and my friend, Pat, starts crying, okay? He starts crying. He's like, he's like, have you ever smoked weed before? And I'm like, no. And they all know me as someone who has extreme anxiety and everything. And he's like, oh, my God. This is going to be either the best day of your life or the worst day of your life. He's like, you just ate a train wreck medical grade hash muffin. It's probably the strongest edible that I've ever consumed, and you've never had one. So I was like, what the fuck is my day going to be like? Yeah. And so we were really high and short, played a game called write a sentence. If you could write a sentence, you could win. On God. <laughs> I couldn't write a sentence. For, oh, shit. You were uh, on like, that you, level. On oh. that level. And then, but the next day, everyone woke up and we were still high. We had con- eaten so many edibles or so much THC in those edibles. And um, I woke up the next day and I had more anxiety than I had ever felt in my entire life. But this is, this is why. I came downstairs. I'm running downstairs to everybody. They're all sitting around at the table and I'm freaking out. They're like, Kyle, what the fuck is wrong? And I'm like, I don't feel impending doom. I, 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 I couldn't. And my friend Pat was like, holy shit, you have severe anxiety. We're all still high. And everyone was just feeling kind of high. And I was feeling normal. And I had never felt normal a day in my life. Like I'd shit. never lived a day without anxiety up until that point. And so I just remember distinctly being so afraid because I couldn't feel anxiety. I just thought something was wrong. And I forgot about it years later until I went back to college. I had a bad breakup and I went home and um, I went back to school and I ended up hanging out with Sarah Drew. God bless her. Took me (laughs) out and was like, yo, I think you have really bad anxiety. Why don't you try smoking again? And so that's kind of how I jumped back into weed. And I smoked and I had a way better experience because I didn't overdose on fucking edibles. (laughs) But, you know, I feel like everyone has that experience. And so from that point on, I was really interested in why marijuana. At first, it like now when I smoke weed, it doesn't affect me like other people, but not in a necessarily a bad way. My endocannabinoid system is alive, functioning and very well. And I like the state where I'm at when I smoke. But when I first started smoking, um, I would get so incredibly stoned and I, it, I kind of didn't like it at first, but you know, there was times that I did, uh, you know, sometimes you like to be like watching a movie and blitzed out of your mind. And I, <laughs> yep. me, sorry, I don't mean to like interrupt. You got me on the, I'm like, once I get talking about weed, I no, get no, super no, excited no, yeah. and I smoked I'm a bunch of here. super lemon haze before I came here. So I'm like, oh. but, um, I met a bunch of veterans and, um, I don't know if you, Colin Wells, who does veteran walk and talk, one of my really great friends, um, a lot of my vets and everything, they use cannabis so medicinally and people really taught me about, you know, building up your tolerance for somebody who's like, needs, if you have true medicinal needs and you need to smoke to function, you know, I started smoking a lot at night, so I wouldn't even smoke in the day. I would just smoke as much as I could before I would go to bed and I would pass out and it would slowly build up my tolerance so that if I needed to smoke and I was having an anxiety attack throughout the day, I would smoke and I would be able to go to school and still write and do all my shit because my friends, you know, they had kids and everything and they're like, listen, I'm a stoner, but I smoke weed and I don't sit down and I'm not paralyzed. Like, I need to be there for my children. So... I really appreciate people like that for breaking the stigma for me because I struggled up until even recently. Like I still go to my therapist and talk to her about this where I thought I was a bad person for wanting to be in marijuana. I don't know about your background in weed and how you entered this, but I just felt like I've, I felt like I was like, am I selling drugs to people? Like, am I, am I advertising something that's wrong? But as I got more into this industry and met people and, I realized that cannabis is way different than like what you and I grew up seeing in the media. The first time I was high, I literally couldn't believe that was what it was like to be stoned because I thought it was like a fucking Brady Bunch movie psychedelic experience. I thought it was like taking mushrooms, okay? <laughs> well, we'd watch these movies at least when I was growing up in health class of people jumping off buildings and shit after they smoke a J and it's yes. like, but yeah, for me, I was like, it was like definitely like the, you know, the underbelly type vibe just like kind of just like doing going against you know the popular way of thinking i grew up in jersey and i started selling buds there and like okay, yeah, so i, fe- I fell in love with it yeah i fell in love with that whole like 
vibe and just the people that I, you know, the friends that I would get from and like just in doing this podcast now, it's coming full circle, like kicking it with you right now. Like, how did we meet? Like, I, we, you came to our, you came to the, the Pier Wanda, Wanda Alice and you were loving Moon, this bro. shit. Al, shout out Alice Moon. Alice Moon, Moon hooking it up. Yeah. yeah. But uh, how, when did you start smoking? Uh, six, I was like 16. Okay. How old are you now? Uh, 30. Okay. So I'm, I'm, thir I'm 31. So yeah. Right. So yeah, I feel like. It's so interesting. I've been re like a lot of people who start smoking at that age, either one or two things happen to them as they get older. I don't know if it's just like how your brain develops with marijuana, but sometimes I notice that as people who smoke when they were younger, when they get older, they like don't like the way weed makes them feel. It almost is like too much for them. And I just wonder if that's like the way, like, I like you know your brain's still developing when you're like you're 15 or 16 i wonder and if not even necessarily like in a negative way i just wonder if like they don't need it you know like i'm saying like i feel like i have an endocannabinoid deficiency and then there's people like alice who have like there's something completely different going on with her endocannabinoid system where she just can't smoke at all so it's just so interesting to see people like me who i could i'm i'm telling you, i'll rip the bong at, at some point during this and you'll be like what the fuck um it, and some people are like whoa you must smoke a, a ton every day but i really don't like you know some days i might smoke a bowl in the morning some days i might smoke a bowl at night but you know i just and then i know some people who smoke oh, fucking i don't know like i don't have a friend who smokes like an ounce a week it just blows me away how everybody you know can yeah. their consumption levels but to me if you're smoking an ounce a week the weed you're smoking isn't good because I, I've, if, or you get so used to the strain, right, yes. or whatever it is. And some people just have an insane tolerance. But like, I brought all this different weed today to, as an example to show you that there is weed that there are people who are going to be listening to this podcast and they're thinking, "I smoke amazing weed. I smoke the best weed," and I. And I'm not saying that this is the best weed, but this tier and this level of freshness, this level of quality, you don't see that outside of California or Colorado or now just these like newer legalized states. They're not, they don't even know how to grow some of this weed, you know? So it's so interesting to see how uh, Colorado's five years ahead of us. But now you guys are finally like, Piruana is starting to really take things to the next level, where I think now, like, <sighs> When Prop 6.4 first got introduced, I thought things were going to go a little bit quicker over here and we were going to see a lot more things like Piruana and we were going to see a lot more events like where we met. And I'm really happy that they're starting to go on now. And I really hope that eventually you guys are going to be able to have like a Piruana lounge because I think that was great and it would be so cool. I really like how there was um, a burlesque incorporated there. I missed that dance. I saw it after. Yes, I was like, I dang, saw, where? I, <laughs> I turned around. I was like, there's burlesque. Like I have, I have a bunch of friends that do burlesque and some of them have been asking me about cannabis themed burlesque and nobody, it's all experimental, these events, because a lot of people say, and I'm probably sure they've said to Piruana, people aren't going to show up for that. They're going to have a drink and they're gonna sit down and fall asleep everyone was mingling and up talking around like talking it's such a different vibe huh than alcohol vibe. and i think that attests to why this works so well because I, I you know way more about this product than i do so i don't know if you kind of want to for the listeners uh, talk about how this is so different than dissolute this is so different than even rosin this is literally like i, I want to say this is like the closest you're going to get to incorporating actual hash heads into what you're drinking and having it be strain specific and i'm sure it definitely affects and we like we were talking about how it absorbs into your body yeah and now that, and that's and that's a good uh segue actually because we were talking right before this about um and there's a uh, straws behind you if you want one too um down below right there um yeah why not um oh, all that paper ones um all about i got them got them on deck um but yeah, we were talking earlier and it happens all the time to me when I'm uh, going to dispensaries, talking to people and you were mentioning it too, is like, people are like, edibles don't hit me. And, it, and what you were saying a moment ago, your system's different, everybody's yeah. system's different, process different. But a part of that too, is that most people who it does hit are a lot, even myself at the past couple of years ago, didn't know what was in my shit. Yeah. Like I was just eating and that's the, and that's the part of the the whole game that's changing in a good way to me is these, like we're saying, rosin gummies, live resin products, 
because I feel like the whole system's been erased to the bottom. People mm -hmm. need to get the cheapest gummy, the cheapest chocolate yes. that tastes good with the cool patch packaging. Yeah. They don't care. It's like, think about like some frozen shitty banquet meal in a fucking <laughs> freezer yes. section. It's like, that's what distillate is. A lot of people don't realize that it's just taking up the trash weed. If you smoked it, it would give you a headache. Mm -hmm. And you're basically just making it like alcohol, just burning it at over 500 degrees, just getting just the THC. And if, you ever smoke distilled vapes? I used to smoke a shit ton, dude. I smoke that shit all day. I don't really feel that much. See, and you know, you want to know why? It's because people, these distilled vapes, I make, I, I make a lot of products because I, I would ask myself why, why are these the same thing? Like, why doesn't this affect me like that? It's because people are cutting these carts with things that aren't real terpenes. Terpenes are making the difference. Distilled at that level, it's gonna give you one effect. It's delta nine. And when you smoke Delta 9, and you as a someone who's consuming a lot of cannabis and you're in the industry, you know, I want to say it gets me high, but it's so clear and it's so like, it's just, it's different than, than without the terpenes. So you're right. It like gets you to a level and then it doesn't get you any further. And so when I, we started making pens and actually paying the money and extracting the real terpenes and putting it in there, people were coming up to me and they're like, why do I take two puffs off of this and I get high? And I was like, well, it's because we're not putting vegetable, like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, That's just crazy. It's, and so I've bought some of these even, or just really two of them, these fucking dablicators from some of these more kind of trap mm -hmm. shop style places. And I took a dab of this shit, bro, and it tasted like, like, something so artificial. Like, I would so taste cool, like a yeah. lip, like, it, it reminded me of like a strawberry lip gloss. Like, And you know what it is? It's the... It's fruit terpenes, but when they when you hit it, it creates this film on the back of your throat. And I try to tell people that's how like you know if it's real terps or not, because cannabis terps don't do that. But the fake terps, it, it creates like this film. Like you'll be like, <clears throat> you want to like clear your throat, or that's why people. <laughs> my, my poor ex girlfriend one time hit one of those like. <laughs> They hit one of those like cheap cards just before anyone knew what the fuck we were all smoking and I literally like from that point on like I was like you you can never dab because that terrified me <laughs> I was like the call like it's just so harsh on some people that's me that like that's like me like I'll take a dab sorry to interrupt but, no uh, no this my, is my roommate anyway. will um do some dabs they can take pretty good dabs but he'll give me one and he knows they give me a he calls it like a baby dab like mm -hmm. my i don't know what it is my lungs like i was saying with the bong bro i just can't you need i just a, can't take that big of hits bro need a moose labs mouthpiece so what it is it's just your you just have a sensitive throat um happens a lot of people do like i honestly i see some people hitting bongs really hard and back in the day they used to be cigarette smokers and you if you used to smoke a cigarette the the back of your throat can handle a harder hit i never smoked cigarettes in my life except for one time very drunk with my old roommate heather i was told that <laughs> i like woke up i was like why do i have a sore throat she was like you smoked a cigarette with me i like cried for like a week okay <laughs> i was like i smoked a cigarette um <laughs> and now I smoke, you know. That's when I'll smoke cigarettes is when I'm like really lit. That's about it. <laughs> so I think it was in 2010. I never forgot it. But these are amazing. Can, for I, can I see that? Yes. And so sorry, it's kind of, it's so oh, used, cool. Cool. you know, but you can pop those out and those are little carbon filters and they're great for both dabs and this. And I'll, I'll rip this with the carbon filter and you'll see how much it collects and what it is it's the resin in the back hitting the back of your throat and it's really harsh and it's making you cough it's not even the smoke going into your lungs half the time it's it's in the back of your throat because i would i asked myself the same damn question when i would hit things and i was like why do i why do i cough and it's certain strains create different resin it's crazy and that and uh, that's where it's really interesting too. And uh, when we were initially talking before we hopped on this pod, you're saying like you're pretty thorough with the strain history. Yeah, you know your growing stuff. You got a, You got a book right I here. Got like this book lit up. man, it's um, it's crazy. Like and, and with that too, I've heard a lot, and I've talked to people on this podcast too who are like strains are real. However, a lot of them are getting if you will, this isn't the right word. I don't think, but like diluted. Like yes. it's hard to find like a true. You know, true yeah. super lemon haze, let's say, because we've been talking about is it. This like super lemon haze is in here. What yeah. You... So that's a soda water tonic and just a little super lemon haze. But here's just I, m I remember making you some of these at the party. Yeah, those this are, is just a five milligram one. Those uh, were bomb. So yeah, that's another super lemon just in water too. So okay, so the reason why you're seeing a lot of these strains become diluted, and it's because these land race sativas, for example, 
homie over Masonic, he um, recently gave me a cut of uh, Panama Red. And Panama Red is a strain you just don't see anymore because it takes a really, really long time to grow. And it doesn't yield a very big amount of flour. So if you're a commercial grower and you have to make X amount of flour to bring to your customers, Panama Red, you're going to need to grow so much of it. And it's, it's going to take a very long time to yield. And again, it's also not going to be very strong. These are the old school land races. People are so obsessed with percentages and THC that they it's look insane. at the thing. Yeah, they're like. 30%. Panama Red is not a 30% <laughs> THC strain. It's like 11%. Um, and so a lot of these growers have just let these land races go. I, people, I mean, they're sitting in people's fridges. Don't get me wrong. You can find these these genetics, but they're, they're hard to find and or they're expensive to get. And so Super Lemon Haze, um, I think I've I wrote some notes down about it because it's like I was I was researching this. I like I love to learn about strains and everything. And so Super Lemon Haze technically is supposed to be Jack um Jack Herrera and Lem Lemon Man's Lemon Skunk. So Super Lemon Haze, the one that won in 2011. Now this is rumored. This is just what people have told me in my knowledge. So I'm not the god of... We're getting the nitty and gritty here. Yeah, I'm not the <laughs> god of, like, marijuana knowledge, so don't quote me on this. But originally, from what I've heard, is in 2011, the cut of Super Lemon Haze that won the Cannabis Cup was actually a cut of Super Silver Haze from Greenhouse that showed Lemon Fino type, and it looked... and. They changed the name. A lot of people are changing the names of these strains. How many times have you walked into a dispensary and smoked something and been like, God damn, I swear that was something else. Odds are it probably is, or it's just something that's been super back crossed and they're renaming it. Like the fuzz, if we look this up, I guarantee you it'll be some like land race well, genetics. And, and this, and I was at a, the Higher Path dispensary mm -hmm. doing a little tour there the other day. And um, Mason, who was doing a tour, was saying, he's like, there's so, there's, it's interesting too because a lot of these companies too are just kind of what's interesting that I didn't even think about with some of these names that are like kind of going to be copyright infringement. Yeah, think about Skittles, what happened with Runts and Skittles. Runts. They just got sued. They just got hit with that huge um, a lawsuit. I, oh, Idiots. <laughs> it's crazy. But I, but like to bring it, I guess, to what like you're saying there with the strain and stuff is, I don't know. It's so. I get both sides though, because you want to make this stuff, you want to have these dope strains, you know, for the OGs, you know, for the real connoisseurs who mm -hmm. want to enjoy the full spectrum, who want to enjoy all these different types of terps and everything. But this yet, super lemon haze, at the end of the day, it, so you can really smell it and you can taste it. I swear, like you can taste it in the drink. Mm. And that's what I love <laughs> about Piruana is you can taste the strain. That shit smells fucking bomb. Now that's a little, this is another thing that bothers me about a lot of the places here in California. That weed is old. You can, I can tell by the way it looks, I can tell by the way it smells, and I can tell by the way it smokes. And that weed was grown, it was like harvested, I want to say like in Shit's April or May. And so it's, it's July now and I just got this, I paid like 50 bucks. But you can go to places that are specifically growing their own weed, like Green Dragon or L.A. Made, and the weed is... Can I check out that Green oh, Dragon? yeah, for sure. This is going to be the fuzz, and I can't remember exactly what, um, like, strain the fuzz is mixed with. Um, this is bringing me back. Yeah, and so I'm telling you, it's these old school... Yeah, this is bringing me back to, like, the New Jersey... When I was growing up in Jersey days, I'm like... Let's look it up, what it is. The Fuzz Green Dragon. Yeah, I'm trying to get better at looking stuff up on my computer, so let me know if you want me to... So... It's called The Fuzz. Well, like, and to your point, what popped in my head when we are talking about... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I found it. And you, okay, so you want to say this is where, this is where I've been saying this for the longest time. You, like you were just saying, you go to the dispensary, you see all the same things. It's cookies, it's Skittles, it's all the same. They're, it's all these wedding cake cookies crosses, okay? Even Burner's Cookies is just a one-off of Girl Scout cookies, okay? There's just a different, like, pheno. Um, and, uh, I might be wrong on that too, so don't...
<laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm wrong on some things. Like, I'm very real about it. I'm yeah, just yeah. going off Respect. of what I told. But um, this is Chemdog and Appalachia. And so this is Chemdog 91 and Appalachia. And Appalachia is another fucking really old school strain. Appalachia is a cross between green crack and Trez Dog. And I swear to God, you smell the green crack in that a little bit, probably. And that's probably what it was because I used to get that all, or people you well, that's the crazy thing to me too, man. I, I've been out in Cali for about six, seven years now and I never really gave any, um, how do I say this? I never really gave strains too much props because I always thought my boy was bullshitting or my, you know, oh, yeah. this is this, this. I'm like, dude, this is just some fire shit. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I used to think the same thing. I was like, I don't care what I smoked. And then I, once you really get into smoking yeah, weed and yeah. you like find a strain, you're like, like, shit. Once you start being able to smell and differentiate the strains, um, like it's, it's and, wild. And that's where, yeah. And that's the, I think the really exciting part and why I love Piruana and why, you know these edibles like we're talking rosin these live resin stuff is like these strain specific aspects but it's it's still interesting though because the average person doesn't really care no the it's average the connoisseurs but uh, the average person doesn't care yet because the average person know. doesn't know and there's still the wave weed is still a cool new thing because it's not legal in all 50 states you'd be amazed how many people message me every day and they're like i've never dabbed and i'm like what a beautiful day to start. <laughs> Let's do this. So, you know, it, it's good, but it's allows for a lot of education. Now think about, think about what the hell were we dabbing? What were you dabbing in New Jersey? Nothing. At, at like, when did you do your first dab? Fuck. I did uh well, I moved from Jersey when I was 16 to Kansas. And then I did, oh, okay. there was I did, I did a, it wasn't even a dab. It was a hash knifey. Uh, the hat, yeah, that was uh, the, the hash knife dab. Yeah, no, that's a dab, bro. That's a for sure hash knife. That was dab. the first time I've seen something kind of like that on the stove top. <laughs> yeah, we did a little knifey, and then it was. Uh, I think I took my first dab out here, bro. And, what uh, year? Uh, fuck, man, it must have been a couple five years ago. Okay, okay, 2015, so... 2016. Like, do you remember what you dabbed? No, uh, actually, I think it was my boy's stuff that he made. Do you uh, remember if it was like it was probably just shatter? Because I, I don't think it was, was um, I think there was only like shatter and. Uh, crumble that you could get back then or I it was think, called yeah i think wax. it was um something pressed i think it was kind of like in this like oh, press thing damn, i have here had... but i think it was like just like not like that it, i don't know i, I can even... oh man if it was pressed you were yeah I, I, if it was pressed you probably had some nice rosin because 2015 you can definitely get the rosin um Oh damn, you got it. You got treated your first dab <laughs> like uh, after the night you you like did your honorary like hot knife dab and you're like this is a little too Richard Pryor for me. <laughs> and um and I uh, and then you just you well, went you right know, to it to the I, top I would, I'm the... curious what's your thoughts on like shatter because I I went to the shop recently and I bought some to make this uh this is just some I bought, there's 2 grams of shatter in here infused with some coconut oil. Okay. Um, it's the first time I've done it. I just did it for a video I was doing, but I was like, this isn't like, and when I talk to people, it's like, I don't even see it in places anymore. People just are kind of more, looking for more quality is basically yeah. what we're saying. Right. They don't want to. And so is that to eat the, do you smoke that or do you eat it? Uh, uh, eat it. Okay. Yeah. I, I put it in this little syringe to test it. I have a one milliliter syringe so I can kind of see the strength. That's I, I like shatter edibles. I think they're great. I think they hit you different than dissolute and it eases you in a little bit better. It might take like just a little bit longer. But I don't know, D dissolute like you were saying, like dissolute edibles kind of hit people a little, a little too hard. Like I like, I love hash, I love real weed, like real clean edibles. I mean, unless they're like hundred milligrams, like, and I, I'm talking about people who eat edibles and can, you know, you like I said, you have a functioning endocannabinoid system, but like we're not slumped. Like I'm not slowly falling asleep. Like these are clean. They they. I don't know. I feel like they're they're made for social consumption. And exactly, and, and that's where with drinking pure one, I've never had a weed hangover. Whereas, like you're saying, dude, I would eat, and even sometimes, dude, my my kind of sweet spot. If I'm gonna keep like do some editing or something, I'll eat twenty milligrams. Yeah. If I'm gonna watch a movie, I'm gonna do forty to fifty and just mm. to kind of zonk out. But it's like when I hit that sometimes thirty to fifty mark, that shit will still be with me in the morning. 
I'm like, I got to get going, man. I feel high as fuck still. I'm almost yeah. like that weed hangover is a real deal. I feel like with certain, like, distillate especially is like. And it's for sure. It's it's so heavy in your body. Like, it's just your body takes a long long time to, like, process that, you know? It's just I, f I feel you. I had a, I was kind of skeptical about weed hangovers a couple years ago until I had a friend who ate some edibles. And he was like hung over from weed for like days but he just wasn't somebody who really ever consumed it and so after that i took it a lot more serious and started like you know really it, it's a thing and I, I i'm gonna have to read more about it i can't even remember exactly why it is i'm sure it's just creating a lot more uh like uh dopamine in your brain and shit and maybe you just kind of you know i don't know i think a lot too or like I don't know, but I think what my kind of theory is too is a lot of it is, of course, your biology, but with that too is metabolism. Yes. Because I and I've noticed it over my just doing edibles for however many years it have been is because like my metabolism has been slowing down as I've gotten older. Mm. I used to be like way skinnier, could eat whatever I want. I still basically do, but I've noticed putting on pounds in the past couple of years, and I'm like. And I feel like the edibles hit longer or kind of just stay with me a little yeah, longer. Or... For sure. Definitely how you process the edibles and everything, like how your liver converts that uh, Delta 9 to hydroxy 11. And uh, some people, it just doesn't, like we were talking about before, some people are not affected by edibles at all. And it's just because it's it, it doesn't create that protein or whatever. Um, and that. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. I just like, I'm trying to, I'm not like well, a scientist, so I don't know. And that's that. what's really interesting too, though, to me is like, yes, I definitely believe that there are different endocannabinoid systems mm -hmm. and there's definitely different uh, physiology, biology, but also sometimes I think some people just didn't have a good experience. They didn't take the right edible Oh, and for it scares sure. them away. They're like, I'm like, have you ever taken it again? They're like, no. I'm like, well, you should try it one more time. Yeah. Try something quality because that's how it, you just get scared off. For sure. There are some people who can't smoke weed and then there are other people who are just had a really bad experience and they're like no 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 oh i don't want to and i'm like well kind of like your experience was good but it, it could have been bad it could have been really it could have gone <laughs> horribly wrong like r write a sentence could have gone really wrong um <laughs> but it it was like a precursor it's so funny how now weed really is so different from me but like I said, I built up my my tolerance and um, just through the years, you know, when I, I'm a trans man. So being on testosterone, I had a very interesting conversation many years ago in MedMen one time tabling. And I was first in this marijuana industry. I would help different brands I used to and I still work a lot with the homie de la Bue bath bombs um we would go table at med men and she loved to work with me because i could sell bath bombs to dudes <laughs> and um i was having a conversation with the one homie who um she ran some uh cannabis company for women i can't remember what the hell it was but she was asking me about like my weed tolerance after being on hormones and she's like not to be like not to pry but you know like testosterone and like um estrogen just naturally that's like it has an effect on um when you smoke and not to say that like if you're on testosterone it's gonna make your weed tolerance up or higher but it, it was so interesting reading about that and i was like what studies have been done on that because i i do notice since i've been on t i my weed tolerance to marijuana is a, is a little bit different i would say it is a little bit higher i'm not i don't smoke half as much as i i used to but that's because i don't have as much dysphoria and that's what i was using cannabis a lot for because when you smoke weed this is another thing people don't realize i'm like oh my god we're all consuming a spiritual drug okay people used to take this and use it for shamanic properties so when you smoke weed and if you smoke normally and all of a sudden you're smoking weed and you're having anxiety, I, I encourage people to think about why that is. I was doing a podcast before with somebody and it wasn't appropriate for me to bring this up. I wish I could have, but he came on the podcast and said he stopped smoking weed because every time he would smoke, he would think about all the bad things that he had done at, in his life, like being mean to his mom and shit. And I really wanted to tell this dude, I was like, bro, maybe the weed is just trying to tell you the things that you should be like forgiving yourself for and moving oh. forward and working on yourself as a person. But people just don't want to think about that. They're just like, things are giving me anxiety. 
I smoke all the time. And at one point, a couple weeks ago, I was having anxiety whenever I would smoke. And I couldn't figure out why. And it was just because I hadn't seen my family in a while. And I was fucking worried about them. And so I think people need to stop and realize that we are taking more psychedelic, mind-altering drugs than any other time in history. And we need to seriously, like, think about why people originally took those. Like, people are starting, like, I had my old, one of my old friends call me up and be like, hey, I've been reading about DMT, and I'm thinking about, like, experimenting with DMT and I was like um are you ready to go meet the creators of the universe bro because that could happen and they're like I didn't even think about that I was like yeah let, let's start with maybe like a mushroom microdose or maybe smoke a joint like for real it's people aren't reading about like psychedelics and this is where I also feel for Alice where people don't believe her that sometimes that she has this cannabis hypermesium syndrome I remember feeling filming with Alice right before she got super sick and could not smoke anymore and let me tell you that is no joke that is really happened and I'm so sure there are probably people that have died because they had no idea what the fuck was going on and they just kept self-medicating with cannabis and so thank god people are making it aware and thank god that there's a lot more cannabis education now because like just oh god i just can you know think about we didn't know what we were smoking back in the day think about so many times that you had like an anxiety attack and it was probably because like you just were having a super sativa and your body was like maybe more of an indica strain and then you get into the controversy of indica and sativa are technically made up and the plant is genetically when you put it under like dna like it's the same it's just so diverse and it has so many phenotypes and it's just a really diverse plant so and i kind of haven't even i've thought about this before but i mean put it in these words is like like we're saying that weed affects everybody's body different you know everybody has different systems it's mm -hmm. like Everything that's alive in, in that regard, to me, has that opportunity to be different. You could have a, one plant that's super lemon haze, another plant that's super lemon haze, and they're just different. They're just different. They're, they're just, there's not, they're producing other, I don't know what the pheromones, right? Or whatever yeah. it is, like they're producing other elements in themselves that are different, whether they get, a, maybe they get a touch more sun. Maybe they're getting a little better breeze. Maybe it's just none, like. This is a great example of this. So this is going to be this Mac capulator's cut. Everyone loves Mac. Um, Colombian starfighter, um, alien cookies. And, uh, this is going to be Mac V2. So this is going to be, um, version two of it. And you ain't fucking playing. This is the. Make sure. Hang on. I may have, I was earlier, I was smoking these with my, my yeah, roommate. So I'm, was like, I'm, I'm reaching around fucking getting no, excited. No, it's here. okay. I, uh, I believe this is the V2. I think this is sticky buns but it's just like a version two of that plant and um that's so interesting they're two very makes sense though i'm happy they do that to yeah take that extra step to kind of be like because they could technically just call it the same thing right yes they, i yeah. mean i don't know it, it's it's different when you smoke it you you'll be able to slight if you're you know a cannabis connoisseur you'll be able to tell the difference but uh genetically um v2 is a little bit stronger for breeding um this plant is, I would, I don't know, just from using it, a clone only cut is. See, and I think what you're, what you're doing here with having all these different ones is like something that most people don't do, especially if they're just like starting out is like to see. Yeah. It's I, like, it it's like you, you have the same one, so you don't have anything to compare it to. And then you run out of the eighth if you just don't smoke that much and you buy another eighth. It's like. I think it should be more of like we're saying just with a talk and maybe maybe that's an interesting thought i've never seen that before is like you know those little things that like seven day, monday through sunday mm -hmm. a little uh pill things mm -hmm. what if what if it was like six of those and it was 0.5 in each one of a different strain that was I've, an eighth i have seen people do that okay um yes and no i don't know like sometimes like it's weird no it's not weird it's just sometimes i feel like you smoke i, I don't know it, it depends on how good you are with like um managing like things like that like some people are really good with portioning things out some people have to lock their stuff up in one of those like case safes because they can only like they can't or they'll smoke all their weed so it's just in interesting how each consumer is different but it's also interesting how stigmatized it everything is still in terms of like consumption like think about like why is it okay for moms to drink wine but not smoke weed like i have a homie who just had a baby and she's like when 
when can I do a dab again? And I'm like, well, I, that's a great question. <laughs> like, when can you dab again as like, as like a mom? So, you know, there's. I have my buddy, uh, sorry to interrupt. I no, had, no. I had uh, my buddy Alex on, he was on actually on the last pod and he, his, the doctor told his girl who they just recently had a, a son. And, but he, the doctor told her basically what he told me was that like, don't smoke if, but like, if you're going to get really stressed from not smoking, maybe take a puff. Yeah. And so that's, and I was like, I, that's some real shit. I guess that makes sense to me. You know, um, I just, the reason baby gets hungry is because that's, you know, that's why you have endo can, you have an endocannabinoid system in mom's breast milk, there's cannabinoids. And so that's what signals baby to get hungry. Um, so wait, sorry, say it again in in your mother's breast milk there's cannabinoids that's why you have a cannabinoid system and that's what signals baby to get hungry in your system okay, when you're a little baby I yeah didn't know that. that's why we have all of that's why we're born with an endocannabinoid system so um it's just there's not enough research done to really talk about that yeah but i like i i was like watching some documentary and reading about shit i love to get really high and read about all this stuff and i'm always like oh my god what that's 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 why um and it's it's crazy like it i like i had to like fact check it i was like this documentary is bullshitting me yeah, <laughs> this is like some 3 a.m youtube shit but <laughs> and no that's like the reason like it, it, it that's why you get hungry you know um and i just never knew that so who who is to say that if you take one little puff like after like you have the baby it's out of your body and are you still breastfeeding can you pump breast milk and have it stored before you take that one puff because i'm sure it's going to filter and metabolize through your system pretty well, quickly and i'm also saying even when even when pregnant yeah well it's like and and to your point of the research and i've been watching and I, I used to keep mm -hmm. up with the legalization news way more um but it's like well that's part of the big thing right and that's why people like me and you i, I don't claim to you know be an expert i'm always yeah. i'm always learning but it's like people like me and you right now with this conversation are at least like raising awareness diving deeper and that's the only way this is this and there's people been doing it way before you know since yeah. before i was born but it's like that's why this has been able to progress and that's a strong part of the culture because we don't have really like federally backed science and there's so many great people in cannabis that people don't even realize that if like put these steps forward think of frenchy cannoli who just passed away he, an incredible r.i.p incredible like hash connoisseur the fact that there are people who were just recently able to learn from him is just invaluable and that's like they're they're the legends of weed are still alive today like you can still go meet the guy that created the first technically the bong like the modern bong you can go like um, I think it's Bob Banster. I can't remember. Um, I, I'm so bad with names to be honest, but it, it's, it's wild when you research actually, like there's a couple different people who modernize the bong. I collect bongs, so I'm very passionate about that, but it's, it's crazy. Like the people who came before us and everything that they did and what has been lost to history that's like like super lemon hey it's like jack herrera his son dan is a super cool guy he works a lot with my cannabis chef chef matt fuck chef, yeah chef matt. chef matt i love him chef matt 2.0 he's doing some dope ass shit and he's taught me a lot about terpenes and infusion and why this is so important and why like this is so different than you know dissolute and uh it's just I hope that with further legalization that people learn more about like their forefathers and marijuana history. Cause let me tell you, it's not, um, you know, a lot of these people that are in mainstream media, they're products of their predecessors. And I just feel like a lot of people don't get the credit that they're given. You need to pay heed and yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, shit, maybe I'm, and and I have wanted to do that. I've done a couple history pieces on my True Buds mm -hmm. TV channel, but I've always loved history too. So I, I've been I've been trying to do it more, but like I wanted, like you're saying, pay pay you that. You need to talk to Skunk VA, Skunk underscore VA, and okay. you need to ask that man about. It. He he's the guy that gave Sour Diesel, like the chem that created Sour Diesel to the boys up on the East Coast. And uh, that's I remember having that in Jersey. That was the, yeah, that was the best bud I ever had. So that that's Sour Diesel. It's still, it's really, really hard to get. Um, he recreated, I believe, a, a cross to like to try to make it again because I, 
some things have just been like lost with time. Like, where's I've been looking for Granddaddy Purple for so long. I will climb a mountain to meet a Sherpa at this point to go. To yeah, get what? Ha- it just yeah, what? Because ha- that that was so memorable to me. That was one of the most memorable strains because I'd never seen anything look like that ever. And this like was in Kansas. Pine cone so- nugs, and it was like fucking just so purple, bro. So purple, and purple's coming. You back. crack it open, and the shit you showed me was pretty perp. Um, yeah. Oh, the the GMO times yeah, Sour Dub that times Wilson. Pretty, uh, that's crazy purple. That's so Masonic. That song's that song. <laughs> that strain is called Everlasting Fire, and the homie Masonic. So there's a lot of cool people doing shit with breeding cannabis, and and they, California is the main place to be. You can go down to Fairfax right now, Fairfax Avenue. And you can go to Masonic store, you roll up in there, you can buy some t-shirts, and you can get some sick-ass beans. He, sometimes he's there, he's got some incredible cuts. People are fucking missing out. Honestly, people are sleeping on, on homie. Like, he's growing sure really were. great strains. And he's also educating people. And I know some people get a little bit mad that he's giving out certain cuts. But at this point, you have to preserve the, your genetics and you have to give out like the, why are people mad because it's diluting well, the i don't know some people don't want to give out cuts because they're worth money they're worth a lot of money i i was at a marijuana show recently and they were selling cuts for six thousand dollars of some strains weed these genetics this mac one this big buns they're selling seeds two hundred dollars four hundred dollars i was talking to a guy at our first event uh, who uh, sam reese at loud pack shout out sam is that he was saying that he collects seeds yeah, I collect seeds yeah. too. Oh, I got um, I didn't know Sam collects seeds like that. I got hit up Sam. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I uh, yeah, I'm a, I I collect seeds, but I know he knows. I think he knows the homie. His brother knows um, another really really cool seed guy, um, I Bean Poppin, who's doing crazy things with mutants. Okay, so he's taking like there's this strain called Australian Bastard Cannabis. Probably never heard of it before because it's a land race strain, usually native to Australia. Homie A was able to obtain some of those from, I believe, Fig. Um, I'm I want to get this right. You got to credit your people. Hell yeah. I don't want to. I don't want Fig Tree, um, and I. Uh, it doesn't necessarily look like weed. It looks crazy. Like if you look up Australian bastard cannabis, it'll come up and it, it like I said, it looks like a weed. It doesn't necessarily produce um, buds that are super smokable, but he's crossing it with other things and creating really, really cool strains and uh, just really interesting genetics. And so people are playing with all these different phenotypes. And I think in the next five to ten years, you're gonna really see some really cool shit. Is that like a little like just different style? Yeah, it's little so nug? different, like, little is like. That, is that what it looks like? It's yeah. just different. Like the leaves are almost they almost look like uh, clovers. Yeah, I'll click <clears> on a couple because oh yeah they yeah, yeah. they don't, it doesn't even it's crazy so. So how 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 is um how do people you know you figure out the stream but like how, how do you. Does it go to the lab? Like, do they look at, do they dive in under a microscope? Like, how is, like, everything kind of figured out and defined? I guess that's what I've always kind of wondered, I mean, too. I'm no expert on, I don't, I will, I'm, the end goal for me is breeding, and I'm still learning about breeding. And so, um, not super, um, knowledgeable on, like, you know, but when you have to, you, when you start breeding and crossing, you're going to want to find your keepers that are really solid. They're not herming. They're not showing any you're not get, you're not popping beans that are ruining your whole grow by herming and pollinating everything or you're not getting a lot of males you know it's just good strong genetics are they holding up against heat how are they doing against um different indoor and outdoor it's really all about testing that's why when you're looking for a cut say burner he's got that cut of cookies why it's worth so much money is because it's producing such a large amount of cannabis it's really good to grow commercially it's going to be really hardy against like mold and other things so we, there's strains for commercial growing and there's strains for craft growers like australian bastard cannabis and 
is going to be a strain that's just for fun. There's a breeder is, strain. Is there um, a, a brand or company that you know that's in the game that that's their main focus? Or just like mutants? Yeah, because I, that's I, I that your boy you're saying. Yeah, that's I Bean Poppin', bro. He's he's doing the he's the mutant game, bro. He's got the mutant game on lock, so it's really cool to see what he's doing. But um, yeah, you know, I'm I'm telling you, head over to Masonics on okay, Fairfax sure. and, and check out their the homie. There's always somebody in there super interesting. You might walk in there and Sherbinsky might be in there. So, you know, that's the interesting thing about California is you have access to all these growers and all these great strains. It's just really a matter of knowing where to find them because there is a lot of bad weed, like you were saying. You just walk into some of these trap shops and it it's it's well, and and like we're saying too is, Old and, not the and that's where like the crazy thing is though is that's like I'm a hundred percent like I you know I was saying it, but it's like the thing that I understand too from the shop's perspective that's hard is that like they just play in the game. Oh, for sure, They're, it's not even their fault. Yeah, there's like trying to they got to sell, they got to get the highest potency because that's what yeah. people. How strong is it? How strong is it? You have to you have to commit to your customer and yeah. like you I, I can hate on big cannabis all i want but it's hard to do it's hard to do it big it, it is and if you're able to produce and cultivate and be putting it out like cookies and sherbinskis you fucking respect because you're it takes money it takes it, it it started from somewhere i mean all these these growers that are super big now and super far up in the game and millionaires they they started from from somewhere in someone's fucking basement i'm sure it's just it's hard it takes a lot of money and that's part of the reason why i'm moving my grow really to, to colorado is because just here i can't grow the level that i want and but i can travel back here and still do all my events and everything and still a fuck with all my same people and everything but i really just want to i want to be able to start doing some breeding and stuff because i'm i've just been i feel like i'm sitting on a a a mountain of gold with no shovel you know um i have a lot of really cool land race strains that i really just want to experiment with i have so many different masonic strains um and they're just really good for breeding and i i want to there's not a lot of trans people really growing right now on the level that i am i'm going to shout out a couple companies that are really like just trans owned and uh doing it in the cannabis industry um ziggy's naturals my boy jordan he is killing it with the cbd probably some of the best cbd on the market they have a really really great t team it's him his brother and his dad and uh do they do other thc products as they well? don't do other thc products they do have delta 8 for some reason i thought i saw that somewhere um, you know Z <laughs> ziggy's is a smoke shop here but okay. um yeah, they're just they do uh, topicals and everything and so they're doing a lot of really great things for like the trans the LGBT community And then there's blissful medicinals my homie Lauren. He also is over in Colorado doing a lot of uh, CBD topicals and then um, I Have glass cat creations which made this bowl. That's my homie. Um, she's a trans woman who blows oh, glass and she's super talented and so I'm badass. yeah I'm trying to represent the Fuck trans yeah, people huh? in uh, in cannabis because there aren't super many of us Buck Angel has his brand as well and um I want to get sorry I was flipping no again. worries I just want to make sure I get no sh dude that that's um Buck's brand right it's cannabis brand it's been a minute uh, show, showing love to the homies that's yeah, what's up you man. Got it. it's all about the support and um once you finish up on Bucks Brander, if it, Pride it, Wellness, Pride that Wellness, is, that's Bucks, Pride Wellness. So those are going to be like the. And if, if I forgot anybody, I'm sorry. I'm like, <laughs> we're on well, a weed I, podcast. I, think I, I, know, I know you've forgotten one. Who? You. Oh yes, me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> myself. No, <laughs> yeah. No, but no, I, no. I took like I uh, like I'm st I'm kind of controversial because you know I'm I'm. I'm growing weed and I don't necessarily have a, a legal license, but that's part of the reason I'm going to Colorado too is because I can get kind of a tier one cultivation license and really get set up. I either want to do a lounge or something. I'm trying to transition from, you know, kind of just growing and doing things like really, really gung ho. And I, I just had to dive into it. You know, I, there was, it was just me and my growing partner. I would not be here without Conrad, this guy, um, that's, <laughs> who he goes by and serena i nobody would teach me about growing um 
you know, I when I first entered this game, it's not that people didn't want to, they just didn't have a lot of time. So the people who taught me the most about weed are going to be the OM Farmers, um, Fatties, Rob, homies have been very, very, very helpful, and then who else? You got Paul Hanna Supply, growing some of the, Joe is growing some of the best fucking weed out there. I would drive to San Diego to get it. And then there's the Goat Man who, legendary, uh, the Goat Man literally, <laughs> when I had nothing, he taught, like, I, he's the reason I'm, I'm still here. And, um, I met Conrad Shit, at a okay. sesh. Um, years ago, you would go to a blacklist sesh, and I, there was two people there that were fucking killing it, right? I went and smoked, like, all, tried everyone's dabs and everything, and it was the OM Farmers, and it was this, this kid named Conrad, he was, like, 20, 21 years old at the time or whatever, and so, when things changed, when Prop 215 ended, the goat man, I was working for him, and he was like, do you know anybody who could blast, like, all this wax? And I was like, the only person I would ever trust to do that was Conrad. I don't know where the hell he is. So I, like, put a message out there, and his mother-in-law, because <laughs> he's living with his girl, was like, yo, Conrad's with Serena right now. Do you want me to, like, hit him up? And so I literally brought over, um, I let me tell you, the maximum amount of shake you can put in a scion tc is 129 pounds not a, not a pound more Shit. you won't be able to move your elbows in the car and so i drove over all those pounds <laughs> <laughs> i thank god i didn't get pulled over oh shit and uh, Conrad and I have been business partners ever since. We've been <laughs> we've been held hostage. We've been you, Conrad and I have been through it all. We've been robbed, held hostage. We've so I he's I, I'm stuck with him. We're we're stuck together. So uh, and uh, he's been growing weed for far longer than I've been smoking it. I think Homie's been probably growing weed since he was 12 years old. So he taught me a lot about what I know and the OM farmers and um. So that's kind of like how I got here and just reading and experimenting and growing like weed on my roof. My my roommates who were just probably still think I can't believe that I'm still in California making money because I was like, you guys, I'm going to. I'm gonna grow. I'm gonna grow weed. It's my passion. It's my calling. I think it's what the universe wants me to do. And <laughs> that did not go along well with them. <laughs> uh, but you know you what? Stuck to your guns, man. It stuck to my guns, and you know, God love them. But I'll, I'll give. I'll, I'll say this, and it's no offense to them. I am moving up the ladder, and I think they're still at home playing Dungeons and Dragons. And so, if you don't take risks, They'll and talk. if you don't. I lost friends. My family didn't talk to me for a little bit. My mom would call me and my dad would call me and they would cry and be like, you're going to go to jail. <laughs> I had my old roommate literally come visit me one time and he's like, he's like, Kyle, I can't believe you're doing this. After it doesn't work out, how are you going to get another job? And I was like, it's got to work out, bro. I fucking, it, I can't. Like, you know, I, this, when I transitioned, I used to be a professional editor and some things just don't work out. Like, I learned really quick the value of vetting for yourself and always make sure HR is there. And so it was a blessing in disguise. I was able to take my unemployment because they couldn't not, they, they couldn't fire me. Else it wouldn't have been good. And um, I drove every single day to these seshes and I would go, have you, you ever heard of Terp Slurp? No. Okay, Terp Slurp Slushies is another brand that's doing crazy, awesome shit. Steven and the homie, um, they're they're killing it. Like they have a medicated slushies with real terpenes, and they were like the first people to let me come film with them. And so that's how I got into okay. cannabis, and I would start filming, and I learned uh, from a lot of growers and all these brands and everything, and started really like having access to all this because a lot of people don't have access to this stuff because let me tell you these strains are expensive if you don't know the grower and stuff you're paying 400 fucking dollars for an ounce sometimes now la made is a little bit better you're gonna walk out sometimes like this is like a 45 dollars like an eighth so it's a little bit better but I, I, the average person cannot smoke this uh, weed it's unfortunate marijuana i was taught marijuana is something that you smoke and you share with others it is created and given to us from the earth who am i to label it at this grand price who who am i 
it uh, like exactly um but i understand the the value that it has and it is the largest ca ca cash crop in the world but at the end of the day and weed i think is all worth five dollars a gram when you come when it comes down to it now there's other weed like it's just crazy to me when you go to like a sesh and you'll see like <laughs> weed at this quality being sold for so much cheaper but then you have to go and fig make sure you trust the person you're buying it from that's the whole thing is everybody wants cheaper stuff you can't you get what you pay for with weed especially right now and if you want a five dollar gram if you want a 99 dollar ounce go to colorado don't come here and buy it because you don't want to smoke it <laughs> yeah it, the, and that's where the it is the whole pricing is really interesting to me and I feel like um, it would make if everybody could had the option to grow, if they had the capabilities, yes. then it would make any price seem more reasonable to me. And you know what? Once you start growing and you fucking realize how hard it is to grow, then you're like, oh, my God, I realize why these crazy people are charging all this money because the nutrients alone when you're this is grown. A lot of this this weed is grown organically. And when you when you grind up weed that's not grown organically it grinds up different like real true organic strains will like shred like i can't describe it and um a lot of these strains are just i don't know they're they're rushed it's it's a problem you see a lot in colorado they're not curing them for the right amount they're just putting in the nut in the night they're putting them for like two days and then they put them in a nitrogen seal bag and let them cure further so you open it up you ever gotten weed that smells like hay yeah. it's just like unfinished and wet uh, it's not cured properly do you think well my question i was about to ask but it makes me wonder if that's part of the reason mm -hmm. is like what what's the workaround for the um humidity in colorado do you think yeah. that's why they do it like it's so fucking dry out here let's let it try to yeah there's different ways but i don't know there's there's dispensaries out there that have mac and everything and they're killing it and it tastes and it has the same consistency as here. So they have to have figured out a way. Uh, it, it, it can't be some <laughs> the secret thing. I think the problem originally back in the day, the Colorado crumble, is they just didn't realize, you know, that you could dry it like a little bit less. You know, I do remember <laughs> back in the back in the day, so day, like it used to be like, and it was like dry, you know, and you came here and you're like, oh my God, it's so fresh. It's so like, and it makes the difference when you're hitting the bong dry weed will hurt your throat so much more it will create more um resin um also if you using a torch lighter affects how your resin is using a you you prefer you recommend oh, the torch i love the torch if you want to rip do you, do you want to rip some bongs well I, yeah let's go i don't know how all right you might be you might be slumped uh, you know, I'll, I'll take it like i said i i'm uh I'm not talking it up here like I take master hits here. No, but, but I want you to try the carbon filter because you're really... Yeah, yeah, I haven't fucked with one of those before. You'll, you'll hit this first because you'll get the nice, clear, clean taste. What do you want to try? I got Big Buns. I got Mac Caps Cut. I got the Mac V2. We got Super Lemon Haze and then the Fuzz. You know, I kind of want to... Because I'm sipping on the Super Lemon Let's Haze. Stick with I, Super yeah, Lemon. Yeah, yeah. All right, I, I fucks with that. They all sound good though, but I'm like, hey, you know, so keep it on that super lemon, that so SL train, man. Yeah, I was so excited. I was like, last night I sat down and I was, I, I'm so dumb. I had Blue Dream and I ripped my bong so hard this morning that I smoked it all. I was like, oh shit. Shit. Yeah, like <laughs> I said, I saw you taking a fat rip. Yeah, I got to rip the bong hard in the morning. Yeah, uh, I mean, um, I got a couple, uh, need a. You, oh, you got it right there. Fuck, ready to go. Got, I'm like looking. I'm fucking always moving shit. I don't even know yeah, where they are. Okay, I come prepared. I'm so used to like, um, I, before I would like meet up with the homies and when whenever I would come smoke, there would always be like one essential thing missing that we'd be like, ah, oh. or if you smoke like with the real heady boys, like, <laughs> remember what I go to smoke with my buddy, and I came over, we got the bong ready and everything, and he was like can't smoke right now we got to go to the store and i was like what do you mean we got to go to the store and he's like yeah we got to get bottled water because he wouldn't put tap water in his what? glass because it can create uh, water stains yeah especially Damn. if you're gonna sell it if you own a a piece of glass that's worth three thousand five hundred dollars you don't want it to get water stains so. that's some thorough shit some thorough and shit. that's where like i've been i'm on the opposite side of the spectrum yeah. i'll smoke out of a little shitty spoon i'll still rip that's i'm like okay. i I'll roll jay like jay's my favorite but it's like I do have a respect for that. 
And like I, some of the, some dabbers I've China seen, bong. some or like the the thing that's taken the next level to me is the dabbing. The dab. Seeing some of these rigs, these crazy rigs. Yeah, oh, I've seen. I've smoked on. I've smoked on some rigs that I've literally afterward just called my family and been like, "Yo, I smoked off a piece of glass that literally cost more than my student loans combined with my brother and sisters." Damn, what are <laughs> like, you sh- shit? Just, I mean, like it's crazy. There's some pieces out there that are worth thirty thousand and fifty thousand dollars. If you're going to the big glass shows, and they have like those those crazy pieces, like I've just seen, like like you, you like, sometimes you just have to do a little dry hit off of some of the little. <laughs> Uh, but I I got really into correct, collecting like roar bongs, so I own a. Roar. That was like one. I that was one of my first ones. Is the roar? The roar, bro. I have a legendary five foot roar bong. Shit. I wish I could have like if when I get a What's case. What's that worth these days? So you can, you used to have to go to Germany to get those custom made, and um. Is that what you did, or you got it no, here? No, I told them I wish I I want to go to Germany, but when I was living in Colorado before I smoked weed, I went to a party once and somebody brought this roar roar bong. And it was the same one that I have now. And um, I watched a girl who was four feet, nine inches tall hit it. And nobody believed me for years and years. So, like, that was a China, China piece of glass. That wasn't a roar bong. And so I went to Glass Vegas, and they had the piece there. And I, I had to buy it. And But in the store, it'd probably be, like, $1,000. But I bought it, like, wholesale. And um, it's my most cherished piece of glass. We took it to, like, a party in Vegas up to, like... I, they, I had to be escorted through the casino because so many people were stopping me because they wanted to hit the, the glass. I was like, I don't think you can hit the bong in this thing, but you could take a picture with it if you want. Shit. So it was a good time. It was my one of my favorite purchases. It was like a once in a lifetime. I knew I'd probably never see that bong again. I never thought I was going to see it again. Um, but I call it uh, Wasson Cross and Wasson Pfeiffer. The <laughs> skyscraper water bong. <laughs> yes, bro. Oh shit! You know who I uh, who was an honor to have on recently was uh, Jerome Baker. Oh, Designs. you had Jerome. I love yeah, Jerome. Yeah, Jason Harris is a fucking OG man, and it's like, and they they doing their um, they got a factory right there in Vegas now. They're fucking. Have you seen his really big bongs? I've seen, seen. Oh yeah, like I've ones? seen some. He, he's had some crazy fucking. I've seen like one that's just like massive. I don't even know if you can like hit it. You can hit it somehow. There has to be. I feel like there's. You could put like a device or something like this that like almost like caps it off because it functions but i would i would love to hit the hit hit that like giant bong or like attempt to hit it but jerome's so cool and did he talk to you about project pipe dreams and yeah, like, yeah. yeah and it's so crazy like where he is now he always like i'm so happy that he's doing well whenever i see him in vegas he's always got like all like he's always got girls with him and all his moms. <laughs> i'm like yes jerome live it live it bro but he's he's a really cool guy and uh He's still blowing really cold glass. I have to get another Jerome Baker piece. And that bong that you showed me back there, that's who I think would be able to get you a, a stopper for that. I... Uh, yeah, I that's like an, a really old school glass piece um, style. And so uh, for old sure, school. Jerome would know where to find that. Or if you went to like Ziggy's over in uh, like Long Beach, um, they have just a lot of like resources and everything. You know, it glass is, it's so interesting, like, project, pro, what happened with Project P- Pipe Dreams and why there isn't a glass, um, like, That's industry in in California and how China really jumped on that. And now you're starting to see it come back. And that's why I'm so happy for Kat. Um, like, when I first met her, it's hard to blow glass. And it, it it's blowing glass like this is no easy feat i can only imagine i'm taking fucking ceramics that shit was hard yeah right so (laughs) she i i asked her i was like yo would you make me some like trans themed glass and everything so she made me a bunch of bowls and uh i you know we're gonna but you're gonna you're gonna hit it first you're gonna do a little super lemon haze and i like to call it like the ferrari of bongs it's super super smooth it's gonna be the sob queen stem I actually got this bong from my homie Snappers Only, who's really known for <laughs> snapping the bong. <laughs> yeah, that carbon filter is going to be so st- smooth. So Moose Labs created a carbon filter. And, uh, yeah, look at that. I mean, that was a small hit yeah. to begin with. But it just, you're going to know. I've it- never... I, I, that's what I usually take because I'm like fucking like can't handle a fat hit. So yeah, you can Shit. take a little bit of a bigger one now. Yeah, go ahead, go for it. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm like, dude, this is fucking. Uh... That's what it's there for, and uh, they're super great. Some people are like, oh, it. I can't rip the bong as hard. I'm gonna rip that bong so hard with that mouthpiece that it will destroy any context that that. I'll probably clog it to be honest. <coughs> But it's that super lemon. So um, the goat man, this is a little tip from the goat man. He always tells me, he's like, if that weed doesn't enter your lungs and makes you want to cough your your brain out, then it's really not like, that's, that's not good weed. And uh, I have to say to him, I have, every time I go see that man, I think that I've smoked the greatest weed that I've ever smoked in my life, and homie just busts out some of the craziest shit, and I'm like, wow, I didn't know weed could get better than this, <laughs> yeah. And uh, Oh, I'd leave a little in there? Fuck, man. No, it's okay. There's a little ghost in the bong, but there's no shame in that. All right, we're going to... That, that thing does hit different, though, man. It uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. smooth, and it's that queen stem, so... Fucking... Damn. <laughs> I'm actually gonna hack myself like a really big bowl. I like I like a good indica. Word, word. Bro, you go in, man. You go in. But you can taste that lemon in there, right? Yeah. But it's also old, you can tell. So just the the aftertaste, I don't know, there's something about it. Like you can taste the lemon, but to me, you can taste the hay, like the real, the, the citronal. Like the... It was a trip, right? When you're saying that, it had like a little re like resin pure wine at the bottom here. I took a sip of it, but then it made it like freshen up. That was <laughs> yeah, a trip. Like, whoa, what? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, whoa, that's a really great. I'm going to throw back the. Uh... Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a fresh piece, man. Yeah, I need this. I need to step up my glass game, man. It's just. Texas uh... Tubes is my own. If you're looking to step up your glass game. Texas Tubes is the homie. Texas Tubes. He makes really affordable and like really great pieces that are like if you're entry, he well he makes he makes some heady ass shit. Homie homie could make you a piece for thousands of dollars. He's a very talented yeah, glass blower. But he also makes really wonderful glass. This is how I got into collecting glass. I couldn't afford a sovereignty at first. These are get really expensive. Especially H how much used. is that? This bong some people will sell this bong for a thousand dollars. I bought this bong for probably closer to five hundred. But when you, this is like owning a Ferrari, okay? When it comes to glass, it's a whole different smoking experience. It's very, very smooth. If you're if you're smoking a off, you're you're smoking every day. You know what I'm saying? But um, Texas Tubes makes glass that functions just as fucking good as this for half the price you can get a really really nice bond for 250 dollars and it will fucking blow you away it's just as good as this and uh so that's why i tell people who are trying okay. to get a nice recommendation glass, you know sure. like yeah and he, he, he's got all different styles sure, he, you know uh beakers straight tubes this is a queen stem and that's gonna be um a little uh, about it's it it's how these slits are it's like there's so many different types of bongs. It's cr it's fucking crazy. Once you really get into like smoking, I was like, oh my god, you stoners are really serious. Like, forget craft beer. Get into a sm get into craft weed. <laughs> <laughs> For real though. But that super lemon, you can feel it. Like I love. I like. I tell people. So your endocannabinoid system and everything. You have like. There's sensors in your arms so i always know if i have a super fucking sativa or some shit super uh indica it hits me right in my arms it tingles like right here interesting yeah and there's yeah. there's re there's receptor yeah. it's crazy yeah. if you like look but yeah i just like it feels like tingling on like the ed the edge of my oh, it's, it's it's wild how different weed affects everybody yeah i get like just like yeah it gets, perks me out i'm like hey what? what's up what kind of music do you like to listen to when you're when you smoke? Uh, mostly uh, hip hop. A lot of hip hop. Um, a lot of times too, I just chill with like some meditation, or honestly too, a lot of times I just chill in straight like quiet mode. Quiet mode. Do you ever have you ever heard of Brock Berrigan? 
No. Bro, Brock Berrigan is one of my favorite beat makers. He wears this chicken mask. He lives in his parents' basement in New York willingly. Like, he probably pays all their bills. Homie's probably rich as fuck. He makes some of the chillest fucking hip-hop beats just to smoke to. Homie is killing it. Just really interesting. He's like the... He's the sample god, bro. He, like, takes samples and shit of, like, crazy things. I don't know. People are doing such cool things with music now and and weed and... the, it, it's such a amazing time right now. Yeah, it really like, is. I liked your, your you had your little intro. Like, did somebody make that for you? That was yeah, that was, sick. A, that was a fiver. Shout out, bro. M6. Fuck, it was really good. I was like, <laughs> damn, I gotta get me one of those. Right, like, thanks. Yeah, bump just, that in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just like, hey man, uh, here's the vibe. Here are some lyrics, but have fun with it. Yeah, that's. How I'm I a get. huge believer in that. Uh, yeah, creativity. artistic creativity. Give, give yeah. them that. Give them some. Like once you start getting too hard on some, it's yeah, like, yeah like, just let them. They won't have fun with it. So that's the key, the fun. For sure. What's your end goal? So you work for Pure One, and now what yeah. do you what do you want to do? Like what, what uh, what is your cannabis goals right now? I mean, obviously that can change over time, but I guess like in the next year or so, like what are you what are you trying to do with cannabis? A lot, really. Um, kind of like twofold. Like for the past you know month since I started working for Pure One, I've been going like all in on that. Now question about sure. marijuana is this a california only thing or is it like a thing that you can bring to colorado because i think this product would do superbly well there especially with the fact that the lounges and everything are really starting to pop off there and then think about vegas they're just about to open lounges i think you guys would be incredibly successful in the vegas scene just because think Agreed. about think about the fact that i could go up to my hotel room in vegas and i could go to just pour it in my drink and super like discreet like i'm i'm gonna get some i go to vegas a lot with me and my growing partner and I, i'm gonna have to bring some pure wana next time and like make a video about it because like just seeing you like mix it with like a little bit of heineken like i know a lot of people like i don't recommend mixing liquor and well this um, is heineken zero okay so zero okay there you go <laughs> so i don't uh, usually like recommend like m- mixing things but i love like the fact that i could go get like Shit, I love to mix shit with lemonade. Like, like, I love that I could take that piruana and like get some fucking fresh ass lemon. Super lemon, lemon. Super lemon, lemon. <laughs> and or you could just add. You could even go to the bar and have your bartender like make you a mocktail and bring it back to your table and just stir that in, and you're good to go. And I like that there's the ten milligram and the two point five milligram because a lot of these and a, brands. And a five. And, oh, there is a Yeah, five? that's what I poured up in okay, there. Okay, sick. Yeah, yeah, you were saying that. Because a lot of these brands, uh, just the two milligrams doesn't... I have to drink, like, three of them. Like, and, and microdosing does affect people. Like, I, I even a, a hardcore cannabis user like me, like, I, I can smoke a, a big hit and I'm okay. But I can also take a microdose, and it is because it's entering your bloodstream, and it is, like, a little that's bit like... different. And I have to... I tell people, too, when they first smoke, that... This is how people get into getting themselves fucked up. And I'm sure they've done it. I'm sure somebody's had a crazy night with piruana. I know you guys were in awe of me because I was doing so many piruana shots that night. I was like slamming yeah, you were, piruana. You were, I was you were going crushing a hard yeah. piruana. I was just like, yeah, my body. Yeah, you were right. loving it. I'm like, let's go. I was loving it, bro. I wanted to fucking fall out. I was like, shots, shots, shots. <laughs> um, but a lot of these companies, I don't know, like... P- well, not- that's the thing is, too, is like, I, and that's why I don't want to, I'm not going to beef on anybody, but no, it comes down no. to what we're saying earlier, too, is like the underlying bottom ingredient line. It's like, we we proudly put what yeah, Pure you- is made from, you know, fresh yeah, frozen flour. to hide it. Whereas, like, that's just not really... Yeah. Any, anybody else who does it, like Kiva Live Resin Gummies, Strain Specific says it right on there. Mm-hmm. Um, the Rosin, what are those new ones I saw recently? I think from 710 are, Labs. 710 is starting yep. to do it more. I think people are just right now under starting to begin the understanding of Strain Specific. Before, I, like I said, everyone was just like, Yahoo, weed, cool. Yeah, uh, you exactly. know, and now we're really starting, you're starting to get the connoisseurs because they, there was no there couldn't be connoisseurs there yeah. wasn't uh there was connoisseurs within an underground community like i mean there's there's like the same few people who were on a form are a lot of the main growers today like subcool um that's why they have these names you do realize that it's because it, it's on, the, they were the on a fucking form like online like a subcool like, well, it's that, like this uh this yeah. paper bros 
Yes. <laughs> like the um, s- same with like Jerome Baker. And Jerome Baker. Yeah. And so like... it just it's so funny. And then you're like, oh, I it makes sense now. I was like, skunk man. What are you? What the fuck are you mm-hmm. talking about? Like, uh, so it's I was dope, like, though, yeah. It's like a symbol of like just like. Oh, and geez, now like... that these cultivars are suddenly able to do what they're able able to do, there's able to be an actual community for it. It's just like when you stifen out a culture so much, like there. Yeah, I never thought right now selling a bag in Jersey. I never thought I'd be sitting across yeah. right now in my fucking room t- on a podcast talking about all this shit. Oh, trust me, I never in my life thought that I was gonna be in marijuana. I was uh, whole. I literally, if I could travel back in time and meet old me, I I would probably start crying. I would fall to the floor and start crying, and then I don't know. I just have to. I would just have to throw hands at myself. I'd be like, "Stop crying, <laughs> stop crying, little Kyle." And I'd be like, first of all, I'd be like, oh, "Why are face. you a man?" And I'd be like, "Things things got really weird after 2009." I love that phrase, "throw hands." Throw hands at it's yourself, so ju- or it's so Jersey, throw, 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 throw hands. Sometimes you just have to travel back in time and give yourself a drop kick. Can you imagine that? Just like walking home, and you just like. Yo, what's up? And you turn and just boom. That'd be Drop fucking crazy. Yourself. <sighs> I could have used it. <laughs> <laughs> I would be rich now. I'd be like, yo. Yeah, I think we all would fucking want to smack our. I know there's. <laughs> star- so- <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, young Kyle, <laughs> you need to listen. Be like Super Bowl winners for the next 30 years. Here go. <laughs> 20 years. Oh, shit. Yes. But yeah, man, I mean. That's the beauty of it is like it is the future and I feel like that's why I'm putting so much time into Piruana is because I do believe in it. When I w- go into the dispensaries, I can yeah. hold my head high, speak proudly about and I'm, it. I'm glad that we smoked the Super Lemon Haze with it because I feel like it really like just right now, like it takes 15 minutes for weed to peak in your bloodstream. So that's why when people hit their weed and they're like, I didn't feel anything. I'm like, just, holy shit, did you wait like 15 fucking <laughs> minutes? Like, because it's gonna, it takes a minute. And so I feel like, you know, it's been, and it's good for people to watch and actually like see that go down too. Cause I feel like a lot of people like, they hit it like when you're on the, watching people like review strains and they hit it and they're like, all right, cool, it's good. And I'm like, all right, so the real effect is gonna happen in about 15 minutes when you get off of here. Then how are you gonna feel? So I think we can really see now the effects of super, true super lemon haze, which is a very up, super talkative. You're super energized, and I mean, that's why it gives people anxiety. It, it makes you. I'm not a coke user, but to use the phrase, yeah, it has a it, ca- makes you it reminds feel me of like, some caffeine reminiscence. Yes, that's like, why. I, that's why I, I do drink caffeine like every day. Yeah, like, so, like it does give me that. Like I want to like almost like like type some shit up real quick. I feel like I can't. I literally cannot drink coffee because it makes me feel like a racehorse on cocaine. Okay, I am. I used to work at Disney World doing like lights and all this like special effects and everything, and I'll never forget our team lead coming up to me and was like kyle if i didn't see you drink all that black coffee i would swear you were on coke and i was like yeah like i'm just so up <laughs> I, that's why i like a good indica because I i'm trying you. to put myself down like a fucking linebacker bro okay <laughs> like i'm up i'm oh, all the way shit. up like my greatest fear of all time is me like accidentally consuming a drug and it's an upper i would just start crying okay because i'm already so up i'm like i do not want to feel any more up god love all of uh, robin williams rest in peace i can't believe they could rail all that cocaine and do all those crazy like up i just need to go down 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 like that's why i love a good indica and i have a lot of people come to me and they're like this doesn't hit me like i people who used to do xanax and everything and they can't do that anymore and so that's why i I've been trying uh, there are strains that are great for people who want it to hit them like like xanax like and there's no shame to that like some people i i, that's I don't that's really why I like it at night yeah, yeah, yeah some people idle really really high that's like what my therapist likes to I say do too for sure and it's just kind of how your like baseline is and i just i'm just up and so people like me you know thankfully when i was growing up 
I wasn't allowed to take a lot of medicine or anything, but I feel like now people are just fed a lot of things. So your doctor can be like, oh, you have anxiety. We're just going to give you a little bit of, uh, you know, Xanax or whatever. But they don't even realize how addictive that is when you can get the same effect from a fucking super heavy indica. And I've had people fight me and say, no, you can't. And I've been willing, I've, I've given people free weed just to say, I guarantee you, you're going to, I mean, it's not obviously taking something that is man-made in a chemical form is going to be 10 times stronger than ever smoking a plant that comes created from the earth for sure but you can they could still go heavy on a they can go ahead bar though of edibles and yes get fucking... and it can get fucked up and so that's why i'm a firm believer in i love to educate people and get, get people off like i have some people like get people off of dr the drugs that they were on before like i had somebody come to me recently Real they're talk. like i love to do coke and i was like listen i know i'm super up but i i don't i've never done cocaine in my life i would die <laughs> my heart would explode and i was like you're getting <laughs> older now and um you know there is weed that will make you feel like you want to feel and you just have to give me a chance to try it out with you. You can't just give up on it. It's strain specific for certain people matters. The goat That's man, sure. he's a sativa man. If you give homie indicas, I wish I could be, get as stoned as he does on indicas. Like, it just hits him really hard. And so, you know, there was days when we'd be working together and he would just kind of be a little spacey enough and... um eventually working together we all came to the realization that boss man just needed to smoke sativa <laughs> and uh so it's been very interesting watching especially old school smokers think about people who well that's a lot yeah like like i was saying earlier too a lot of people don't have options like think like about, you're saying like you can't and uh, yeah affordability you can't think about what's available to you in like alabama or what was available to us back in the day and then how much weaker it was too so like up until do you know what year the hydroponics were invented mm, i'm gonna take a guess here i'm gonna say 1999 no hydroponics was invented in 1989 i believe okay and i think snoop dogg goes and talks about this on seth with seth, seth rogan and the first time Snoop Dogg had 19 at hydroponic was 1991. So there was hydroponic weed going down in 1991. What's your thoughts on the between that and soil? And um, well, everything before hydroponic was grown outdoor. So that was the true introduction to like indoor growing, you know. Um, and I grow hydroponic and non-hydroponic. I think you can. It's just about the medium that you prefer. Some people like to grow in cocoa. Some people like to grow in soil. Some people like to grow in rock wheel cubes. It's just about... They grow the whole thing in like a giant rock wheel? Yeah. Like uh, I have... Some of my plants are in just like big old like rock wheel, wheel cubes. Yeah. Um, grow Dance. That's Grow Dance. I uh, fucking love that brand. They've been around forever. But yeah. And you you manually feed your, your nutrients in then. But s soil is a really great medium to grow in. I still probably one of the most popular but hydroponic you're just able to take the strains to the next level of being able to feed those plants those nutrients so that really took things to the whole level and so the reason they call um really really good weed chronic is because in 1991 when snoop dogg and everybody and they had this guy come album, over right? and it... well chron yes but the how chronic came to be the guy that brought them this hydroponic weed, they got so high that he mispronounced it and said hydrochronic. And so <laughs> they started calling, calling weed the chronic. Um, and so that's how the chronic got its name. And then that and becoming of that like album and everything. So that's like, there's so much really cool weed history that isn't like in a book or anything that you just really have to like learn from being around those people and like listening on podcasts and, uh, you know, there's starting to be more books and everything on it. And it's just, it's cool that a lot of the people that started this are really still alive and still, you, you're, you can, that's a, yeah, that's a trippy that. thought. I haven't really thought about that like that hard until you said it earlier. Mm -hmm. And like Dan Herrera, 
you can probably get him to come on your podcast. He's a really cool dude. I saw him at that uh, uh, pineapple event. I didn't yeah. get to say what's up, or maybe I did. I don't remember. He's but. so nice. He's super cool. Um, I the first time I ever had Jack Herrera was I met him at Judd. Used to have um, parties up at his uh, like events at his house, and he was there um, with his company. And I was like, "Damn, you look just like Jack Herrera." And he was like, "That's my dad." And I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> I was like, "Wow." <laughs> And I was like, is this a real Jack Herrera? And I was like, oh, can I try some? And I like had it for like the first time and it was so good. I was like, wow. It was like the first time I think I probably had like a true, true sativa. And so it's it's just wild. The Yeah, like what? Like I, I just think about, no, sorry, I got an itch on my nose. But um, it's, it's wild to think that you can go talk to that guy whose dad created Jack Herrera. And I mean, there's other strains before that like jack's cleaner and everything and i don't even know how you would obtain some of those strains like what's a strain that i've been trying to get do you remember chernobyl i've never had it chernobyl is such a good strain it's a one-off um slimer is a one-off strain of chernobyl oh my god i'm sorry i have like the worst itch in my nose oh, you right chilling, now. You chilling. no i'm kind of um, like moving around over here i'm like i gotta take a leak <laughs> you want to you want to take a little break take a leak We'll probably just uh no I'm not gonna I want to oh, yeah, I want you to sure. finish your story but uh yeah so there's I don't know, there's just so many strains lost to history that I'm like on the hunt for I just got original I just got the original haze and haze is a very big breeding plant it has so many different phenotypes leaning I mean it's has its genetics and blue dream and all that like a lot of these strains that you see are haze and i just want to go over really quick i wrote down a couple other strains that i know that pure Juana has the blue dream which is a cross between dj shorts blueberry and haze um or i'm sorry super lemon or super silver haze and that has origins in santa cruz and i think that originated around 2003 and um i feel like it was super popular on the market until 2011, and then that strain really started to fall off. But you can go to Colorado and find that strain. Why, why do you think it fell off? It's so oversaturated. I Just used, too much. Yeah, uh -huh. You literally, everyone and their mom was smoking Blue Dream. I remember I was like, oh, great, Blue Dream. That's what, <laughs> well, what do you think? That, I feel like that's kind of reversed a little bit, though, yes. like you're saying, right? It's, 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 now it's, you can't yeah. find it anywhere. And then Forbidden Fruit is Tangy and Cherry Pie. And it's actually was created by Joseph of Chameleon um, Extracts. And um, it's crazy that he grew like 37 different phenomes. And that's the only one that really came out like that. And I was purple. I think and I have some of those terps over there. Oh, yeah. Forbidden fruit. Yeah. Is it this one? Uh, in that glass. In that glass. Yeah. Grab that big pack. This is a strawberry cheesecake. Sounds amazing. <laughs> I don't know if I should. Oh no, I do have another water here. This is. Oh no, that's Clementine. There's more in there. Getting distracted. So oh that's <laughs> okay. I have a couple more. There's so. And then you guys have XJ13, which is a 50 50 hybrid. Which I got for you right here. Oh yeah, chicka chicka. So that's a 50 50 hybrid, and it's a um. It's a cross between. Uh, I can't read my own handwriting, which is really great. That's so funny. Um, but it's a uh, remember like G thirteen that strain they all talk about, yeah. like and that's like supposedly like a government strain. That's definitely like that's one of those indica variants that you see in there. Um, and then the venom OG, which is created by rare dankness, and it's poison OG times rare dankness number one. That's my nightcap for real. That's a really good. I'm a huge OG lover. Um, and OGs are starting to come back. I feel like you're, I just feel like everyone got a little burnt, like, don't get me wrong, runts and all these strains, they're really great. I'm just so uh, super overrun and sick of them. <laughs> and that's why I, I go to Peace of Green where they have like Mac and they have like, you can go there sometimes and you can get Acapulco Gold. Shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's really, that's, I feel so good. It's so nice having that option. Mm -hmm. Like, it just feels fucking good good acapulco gold but it's it's hard so i i still just like a lot of times just get it from my bro who or who grows some good shit my buddy yeah but it's like there's something like you're saying too of like having that stat like and having it the, the option to smoke them because you'll still smoke through them about the same amount yeah personally i you know it's like 
that's the way to do it. It's good to have. It, it's good to have because there's there's days where I don't want to feel necessarily super relaxed, and I, I do want to have that uppity energy like you're talking about when you're editing for like. You know you're a stoner when you are super tired and you smoke weed to wake up. Like, okay. <laughs> I have been so unbelievably tired. Me and the homie Tatiana have been, like, working nonstop packaging and stuff back in the day. And I cannot tell you how many times that I've just been, like, about to fall asleep. And I just rip the bong and get the second wave of energy. And I'm I'm good to go. Like, and <laughs> so it's just wild to me how like some people would fall down on their face and be asleep it's just everyone's biochemistry is so different yeah people that uh people that don't smoke are like i don't know how you do it so what is what's next for pier one are you guys gonna have more events like yeah we got one popping on august 12th on august you have venice oh, beach venice beach let's do uh, yeah, thursday um if i'm to in 11. town i might be in chicago i've got to go see my, see my family well, well, yeah, so long. we got a couple more coming up but i'd love to i'd love to go and i'd love to um I'd love to bring some of the, I, I always try to bring people and be like, Hey, look, you guys want to drink some weed? And they're like, what? Hey, roll through too. I'm doing a, like a pop-up too with a bar outside of atrium. Okay. I know right where yeah, that is. I'm um, just going to make some, whoever it's going to be like a BOGO deal. But, and then okay. like, if you'd get that, then uh, you'll get, I'll shake you up a cocktail, okay. stir you up something. You know where you guys need to possibly. So I you know the homie does, um, she manages blind barber. And that's like, it's a really cool venue. And I know that they host events every once in a while. I got to give you uh, her information to see if you guys could do like an after hours event, like where you did, where you rented out the bar and it's like a private event because it's, um, it's so discreet. Cause it's, uh, it's a, by day, it's a haircut, like a barber shop, And by night it becomes a prohibition style bar and it's really cool Where, yeah, and there's no a, windows or anything so you're like in there and you're dancing like old and you have like no idea what time it is you're like oh, this is the shit and it'd be so cool to like be raging on piruana and people and and we're and they're a cocktail bar people are like, getting excited people are hitting us up they want to do pop-up bars and stuff like that yeah. like we're doing a wedding we're doing a couple others oh, coming shit. up we're doing a you chaplain guys, unleash event you guys gotta go up. to a wedding um a wedding conference where they you know they have all those booths and everything. Yeah, we have like a kind of team, kind of the yeah. grass fed who, who kind of who's helping out with our events. They're oh, I've done an event with grass. Oh yeah, fed. way back yeah. in the day, okay, one yeah. of their first events, they had it at this. Oh, this I remember. This lady got so high. She was sitting. <laughs> I, this was this old lady. I'll never forget it. She was sitting and she was so high. She was crying. She thought the police were gonna come get her. I was like, we're at a legal marijuana event. The police are not coming to get you. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, I, I put a fair amount in oh, there. No, it looks I'm pretty, to, but yeah. But I'm about to rip it down before I rip this. Bond. I rip that down. Yeah, let's. I might uh, shoot. I might just play out the outro in a second and have. And it, and while rip. I'm ripping the bong. Yeah. All right, hold up. Let me pack it really big. I'm gonna do a super big bong rip. This Word. is. There's probably already. This is like a gram bowl. Cause you know when you're ripping. Hey man, you. you respect. You got to respect. I'm telling you, when you rip a, people are like. How come, You're inspiring me. How come you don't smoke all day? And then I think about it. It's like, because I fucking ripped a gram bowl in the morning and I'm just fucking good for the rest Shit, of the day. dude. Especially in the morning, it always hits twice as hard. I just, I don't smoke every morning in the morning, but every when I do, I make sure it counts. <laughs> for real, it's been a pleasure having it's you been on. Great to, it's been great talking to you. I, uh, I'm definitely going to come check out more Piruano events. Please do, I, uh, I'm excited for you guys. Hey, thank you, man. I'm excited to be part of Pier One, man. Um, it's just really changing the game, dude. Punch and you're going to have a lot of more cool people on this podcast, too. I already know. Like, I feel it in the air. Yeah, it's been fun, man. That's, that's the dopest part about it. And that's why it's just, like, cool to kick it, talk, and hang out, learn, man. If, you, like, I've learned a lot talking to you today. Like, if you want to, um, another person that you might really like is Chef Matt. I don't know if you've ever met him. He does a lot. Um, He's all licensed and everything, but he's like an edible expert. That's, so it, that's perfect. If you want to get into somebody who knows, like he's taken so many classes about infusion and everything. And so he actually will probably be a great person to discuss why Piruana hits you so wonderfully. And it, you, 
it's not like dissolute where it's like pow 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 and you're like whoa, whoa, whoa oh my god I'm high it's <laughs> like a nice easing into it like it's like thank you like a for smoke being here today drink. it's the princess yeah. diaries of edibles <laughs> well you know and it's like um, it's kind of like the way I envision it too is like when you put it in the glass and watch it dissolve yes it's kind of doing that in your body yes it's just it's like it's slowly entering my bloodstream <laughs> like hey what's up how you guys <laughs> doing to- it's like it's it's going over to my liver. It's like, hey, absorb me, and I'm like, I got you. <laughs> hey, come on. All right, I'm gonna rip this hard with the the Moose Let's Labs mouthpiece. Sponsor us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for real. For real. For real. For Not real. Even kidding. Yeah. <laughs> First hit, best for best hit ever. Best hit ever. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, you're recycling. You're, uh, it's good. You know. We're it's, giving uh, back. We're giving back. All right. This one's for Piruana. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to take the headphones off so I can really get into the rip. Okay. Let me see if I've got a different Am I in the good spot for the camera to see? Yeah, you're... I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, you're good. Champ, fuck. 